Welcome to What the F is Going On in Latin America and the Caribbean, Code Pink's weekly YouTube program of hot news out of the region. In partnership with Friends of Latin America, Massachusetts Peace Action, and Task Force on the Americas, we broadcast every week at 4.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Code Pink YouTube Live. This week, we're coming to you on Thursday versus our regularly scheduled Wednesday. Today's episode is titled Food Sovereignty, Venezuela's Che Guevara Commune. The crisis in Ukraine has created conditions for loss of farming production and global food distribution. Already there exists a shortage of fertilizer and an increase in energy costs that will affect food production, transportation, and distribution. Today is the first in a series of conversations that we will have about the importance of food sovereignty and how different countries, organizations, and institutions are attempting to guarantee the human right to food. Our guests today are Felipe Venagas and Irma Rodriguez of the Commune Che Guevara and the Union Comunera in Venezuela. Translation will be provided by the Simon Bolivar Institute. Welcome, Felipe and Irma. Thank you. So let's start um, today. Why don't we share with our audience what the uh, Che Guevara Commune is? what your focus of work is, how it developed, and what the two of you specifically do within the commune. The Socialist Commune Che Guevara Mesa de Julia, it's, uh, it's located uh, in the state of Merida at the south of the Maracaibo Lake. This commune is made up by 14 community councils and by two uh, social, uh, social enterprises. Our, com our commune basically produces coffee and cocoa uh, and we're about uh, um, 1,500 families that are mostly dedicated to the agricultural work. So we collect, our families collect uh, uh, coffee and cocoa. And what we, and what the commune does is to uh, try to obtain the best price for our uh, production. Is the, is the production for domestic or uh, export? consumption? The production is for local and national uh, consumption. So the idea of the commune is to socialize that production by generating better working conditions for the communities and at this territory. Out of this experience, the community is now participating in a wider, uh, um, uh, wider space for, or, for uh, gathering, which is what we call today the uh, communal union, the Union Comunera. This space uh, just groups uh, 60 communes from all over the country in a wider space. The communal union basically poses the, the idea of uh, widening the economic and political uh, working sphere of the communes at the national level. So in the same way that a commune uh, involves uh, several uh, community councils. The communal union uh, basically groups uh, different communes, giving it a wider uh, territorial space of action. Is the union of communes all food production, agricultural based, or is it uh, um, a mix of industries? So the Union of Communes groups different types of, uh, of communes throughout the territory. It's, it's really a territorial uh, type of organization where you can have uh, communes from both uh, city or uh, from rural uh, areas. So it's a, it, it, it involves a wider range of uh, action. The idea of the Union of Communes is that we can generate strength in all aspects of production and that you can have uh, both uh, in industrialization uh, as well as distribution of products. This is like very impressive. So let me ask, um, this is clearly um, for many in our audience, um, a really good economic structure to develop domestic production in all forms and also it's an excellent tool for um, combating uh, unilateral coercive measures or sanctions um, as more commonly known. 
Is this, how do you, um, how do you see your role in that? I'm sure it's extraordinarily important. Um, sanctions, unilateral sanctions have affected uh, the, the sources of uh, economic, uh, um, of, of economics in all throughout the country. At this moment of crisis, the commune has really been a space for resistance to, to these actions. So uh, through the communes, uh, family agriculture has been uh, uh, very key in providing greens and vegetables and to strengthen uh, um, all the, the food sources uh, during uh, this time where the supplies were being blocked and, and, and so that the markets uh, could be provided for when there was lack of cereals and other uh, type of, uh, of food that was coming in from outside. Can you share with us um, how much um, the, your commune specifically, but the com communal system in general um, supplies or produces food, how much food is produced for Venezuela and, um, and talk about some of the distribution um, uh, what, what do I want to say? Distribution issues, or some of the some of the challenges you have in food distribution, specifically related to fuel and um, and keeping transportation vehicles functioning, because we all know um, a lot of, for example, for trucks, that it's difficult to import uh, uh, tires, batteries, and those sort of things. Although we're all fully aware that that is improving through trade with. Uh, non-U.S. aligned countries as well? Um, you know, mainly, as, as you know, uh, m you know, we, we, we communes deal mainly with agriculture, but uh, it is the oil industry, uh, which is the main uh, source of uh, income for Venezuela. So the first affectation of, of the sanctions has been, for example, the lack of spare parts uh, for the oil enterprises, which is you know, key for, for the whole country. So the second, the second affectation is uh, the lack of spare parts and that affect uh, distribution for us. Uh, you know, we, we see uh, trucks being affected, tractors, uh, paralyzed uh, machinery uh, uh, because of this crisis uh, or that creates a crisis uh, in the agricultural uh, sector. And we also saw a crisis in the supply of fuel uh, due to the sanctions as well, which meant that it also paralyzed our, our whole industry and our um, distribution of, of, of food and other products. Uh, so the third hit that, that we get is it comes from uh, healthcare, because obviously as uh, you know, part of, uh, you know, of our productive uh, uh, small farms, uh, you know, they're, they're made productive by the people. The people are the ones that work them. So if the whole country is being affected by not having enough uh, supplies for health, that has a psychological and a physical effect on producers themselves, uh, on, on our uh, uh, small farmers. And that, it gives, it, you know, it, it's a great impact uh, as well. So this is, this is just really so important for our audience to understand how wide the ripple out effect of sanctions. And there's so many, so many people think it's simply, you know, sanctioning government officials and, and corporate uh, leadership, et cetera. But this really goes right down to the community level and affects all aspects of life. And I think what you're sharing with us is just, is, is so important and it's it, to, uh, to see you, it's amazing what you have achieved. And I wonder, um, I understand that your commune also helps in training other communes and uh, educating and training other communes, specifically agriculture. Can you share with us what that, that training and people to people work uh, involves across Venezuela? So, so the objective of, of the Argelia Laya Brigade is the growth of the uh, Union of Communes uh, as a network uh, uh, and as, a, as the unity of all these uh, communal forces. 
the brigade uh, basically uh, undergoes uh, or, or, or tends to three phases, uh, one of uh, exploration, one of agitation and one of consolidation. Uh, first, uh, the exploration, they go to the territory so that, so that they can make uh, an assessment of the state in which uh, the territories are. Okay, so, so after assessing, after doing the, a diagnosis of uh, the problems and the situation in different regions, there's the phase of agitation or activation of the territory where basically um, these, uh, these uh, members of the brigade, which are trained uh, um, militants from, from the communes, uh, they're trained in the productive uh, process, they're trained uh, also with political and ideological uh, education, and they're trained in community organizing. Uh, so they can, uh, they can make sure, and, and, and they go and, and look at how they can create policies that can guarantee uh, the well-being of uh, the communes. Uh -huh. So this allows this allows us that uh, then at the territories, uh, people are uh, trained in community organizing and 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 and, and politic political education and organization, so that uh, you end up with uh, uh, community work and building the relations among the local communities into how to make uh, these policies come into effect and, and, and be, uh, be put into action. So then, so then you, so that uh, the idea is that you consolidate these community networks and these community relations so that they become eventually lasting and, and they, uh, uh, per, uh, you know, they, they, they're able to remain uh, for longer time. So once the community, the so so once uh, this training uh, brigade uh, goes through a commune and helps organize and consolidate uh, this commune uh, and and takes it to that uh, consolidated level, uh, it it helps add into a network of communes so that these new relations are built between the different communes and then uh, which, which will then allow uh, productive forces to develop further. That is what is the, the main objective of the of the um, of the union of communes. Uh, this is the, the, the basic uh, principle of it. It's very it's very impressive, and it's I mean it's really um, it's so heartening to see something so positive and community building across the entire country where your work goes. It's just really very impressive. I can I'm assuming, and perhaps I'm. Um, wrong. I'm assuming that the communes are all uh, people owned, people operated clearly, people, the labor is all provided and the ownership is by the people as well. Is that correct? It's social ownership, I guess, is the per correct way to phrase it. So yes, uh, so the, the communes are, are social organizations. Mm -hmm. they're, they're born out of the grass and, and they're born out of the grassroots. Uh, this, is, this was, of course, a policy promoted uh, by President Chavez, but, but these are uh, organizations that are born out of grassroots uh, and, and, and base organizations and, and to basically consolidate what is, what is the people's power, uh, the people themselves uh, being organized in, in, into, uh, or into a popular organization. So the people have control. The people have control of the means of production, the land, the distribution, all of it, versus the privatization of, um, of, of farming specifically that we see in the United States and Western Europe. Can you, um, so this is very exciting to, to share. Yes, so yes, that's exactly right. The idea is that we own, uh, these, these uh, social organizations own the means of production uh, because in fact they are uh, grassroots organization. They're basically peasant or, or rural worker organizations, more farmers that we unite in order to uh, strengthen ourselves uh, in this time of crisis, uh, so that you know we can produce food for ourselves, so that we can produce uh, we can have productive exchanges between communes, and then the union of communes basically elevates this from. Uh, regional level or local level to a more regional and even a nationwide level. 
So what is, um, so you have, a, so if the, the union elevates all, collect, collectively elevates all of your work across the country, what is the relationship between the union and, uh, and the government in Caracas? Is it a, a symbiotic relationship? There's a lot of support going up and a lot of uh, support and encouragement from, from the national government as well. So just to, to, to clear, so to make something uh, clear, the Union of Communes doesn't group all of the unions in the country because there are over 3,000 uh, communes uh, in, in, in the country. Uh, some, some have been successful, some are, you know, are, are uh, stalled, uh, some have not been successful, but uh, we are a group of some of the communes. So uh, we have been, uh, so the, the, the Union of Communes has been around for only three weeks. Uh, we've we've uh, started uh, this organization uh, March uh, 3rd and 4th. Uh, so we, we are currently on, on this approach toward, you know, toward the government, uh, you know, building this uh, relationship with the government and, and building this relationship of support. That, you know, we, we, we are uh, seeking that support um, so that we can, jointly uh, build this uh, communal socialism, which is the idea that uh, Chavez uh, proposed. So right now we're in that process of uh, building that relationship because we've just been created. Communes are also a form of self-government. So mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of the, the, join, uh, the joining of both uh, consti constituted uh, power as well as constituent power uh, which we're trying to, uh, you know, uh, put into place. Well, the, com the community control and ownership and management, it really gives you a lot of, a lot of sovereignty in the, in the production of, of everything. I mean, for you specifically for food, but for everything, if that, if, you know, given how these communes are growing and spreading, it's really a phenomenal project and very encouraging and a really, really, terrific option to be talking about right now, given, you know, the, the changes that are happening in the, on the planet, particularly with food production and distribution, but, you know, with supply chains in general across, across the country, it's really a really, very um, impressive project that you're working on. And it's a real honor to talk with you this afternoon. Is there anything that um, is there anything you'd like to share with our audience uh, before we before we wrap up uh, today's program? Anything that I that you particularly want to share that needs to be said to our audience? Well, just I would just say as a last comment, you know, we we are the the Union of Communes. It's not a it's not, the, it's, not, it's not an absolute thing. It's not the, the uh, it's not all uh, wonderful. We, we, we're still in the process of making uh, uh, this uh, space. Uh, of course, there, there's still problems that we have to, to deal with, but it is, um, it is important that uh, this is a space where we can now uh, strive towards uh, that communal socialism that we want to build, uh, you know, that we want to make uh, a reality throughout all our, our territories uh, uh, of strong and consolidated uh, community organizations uh, so that we can have, you know, uh, improvements for, for our economy and for our way of living. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Felipe and Ilmar. What a, what a pleasure to meet both of you and to talk with you today. I'm really, um, so am, I'm so impressed with your work and it's just, such wonderful inspiration and encouragement for, uh, for seeking an alternative. And, um, and it seems to be, you know, a successful alternative. So, so, so thank you for your time today. 
Uh, <laughs> and the youngest me. <laughs> so I want to remind our audience that you've been watching What the F is Going On in Latin America and the Caribbean, Code Pink's weekly YouTube program of hot news out of the region. We broadcast every Wednesday, 4.30 p.m. Pacific, 7.30 p.m. Eastern on Code Pink YouTube Live. Also, be sure to catch Code Pink Radio, which broadcasts every Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on WBAI out of New York City and WPFW out of Washington, D.C. Both programs can be found on Apple Podcasts as well. So thank you, everyone, and um, we'll see you next week. <laughs>